Welcome to Tutorial 7, Using Automatic Controllers in GPSX. Automatic Process Control is widely used in the wastewater treatment industry with MLSS and dissolved oxygen concentration controllers being very commonly implemented. The objectives in this tutorial are to learn how to set up a dissolved oxygen controller that will change the aeration rate to meet a set point and to learn how to set up an MLSS controller it will adjust the biosolids wastage rate to reach an MLSS set point. Having a good control system for these variables allows for improvement and stabilization of operating conditions, as well as reduced energy consumption and operating costs. Begin by opening the layout created in Tutorial 2 and save it with a new name. By default, the aeration tank will be set to use DO control. Verify that the DO controller in the aeration tank is active by right clicking on the aeration tank and selecting Input Parameters Operational. If the DO controller is active, the specify oxygen transfer by variable will be set to using a DO controller. If the DO controller is not turned on in the aeration tank, switch to modeling mode to turn it on and then return to simulation mode. We will now create an input controller for the DO set points in the aeration tank. The set points can be accessed in the aeration tank's operational form under the aeration control subheading. Click on the ellipses and drag the first and last set point onto a new input controller tab. A range of 0 to 10 mg per liter is appropriate, so we do not need to change the input controller properties. Rename the tab to DO set points. We will now create a new output graph that contains the dissolved oxygen concentration in the first and fourth reactors as well as the effluent ammonia nitrogen. Right click on the aeration tank and go to the output variables, concentrations in reactors. Click on the ellipses next to the dissolved oxygen in the reactor variable. Drag the first and last element onto a new graph. Right click on the aeration tank effluent stream and select output variables, concentrations, and drag the ammonia nitrogen variable onto the same graph. Click on the graph properties button and rename the graph appropriately. Set the maximum value to 10. Auto arrange the graph. Save the layout. Run a 20 day steady state simulation, varying the influent flow rate and DO set points. We will now add an MLSS controller to the layout that will automatically adjust the biosolids wastage rate to meet a specified MLSS set point. Switch to modeling mode. The variable we will be controlling is the MLSS in the aeration tank's effluent stream. We need to identify the cryptic name of this variable for use in the controller. Right click on the aeration tank's effluent stream and select output variables, concentrations. Hover the mouse pointer over the mixed liquor suspended solids label until a tooltip appears. This will show that the cryptic variable name is XMLSS. You can remember this value for later, or you can right click on the variable name and select copy cryptic name to clipboard to store XMLSS on your computer's clipboard. The most logical variable to use as a manipulative variable in this case is the pump flow from the clarifier. Right click on the clarifier and go to input parameters operational. In the pump flow subsection, turn on the controller and set the set point for the control variable to 2000. Click the More button at the bottom of the Pump Flow section to open the Controller Settings. Set the control variable to XMLSS. If you copied the cryptic variable name earlier, you can use Control plus V to paste it into the field. Change the controller sampling time to 0.05 days. The controller sampling time is the frequency with which the controller samples the controlled variable, which is MLSS in this case. Set the toggle to Off for the controller effect on control variable direct. 
This means that as our manipulated variable, in this case wastage flow rate, is increased, our control variable, MLSS, decreases. If, for example, we were building this controller for dissolved oxygen concentration, we would turn the controller effect on control variable direct on as an increase in the manipulated variable aeration rate results in an increase in the control variable dissolved oxygen concentration. Therefore, the variable should be turned on for proportional relationships and off for an inverse relationship. Set the maximum pump flow to 200 meters cubed per day. Accept the form and save the layout. Switch to simulation mode. Right click on the clarifier and select input parameters, operational. From the pumped flow control subheading, drag the controller on slash off switch and the set point for control variables to a new input tab. Press the more button. Drag the proportional gain, the integral time, and the derivative time variables onto the input tab. These are the PID controller tuning parameters. Rename the input controller tab MLSS controls. Click on the input controller's property button and change the minimum and maximum values to the values currently displayed on the screen. Right click on the aeration tank effluent stream and select output variables concentrations. Drag the mixed liquor suspended solids variable to a new output graph. Right click on the influent object and select output variables flow. Drag the flow variable onto the graph. Right click on the clarifier's pump stream and select output variables, flow. Drag the wastage flow rate to the same output graph. Open the graph properties window and rename the graph appropriately. Adjust the maximum values to 5000 for influent flow, 5000 for MLSS, and 600 for the pump flow. Ensure that you have unlocked the maximum field prior to making these changes so that the values can be edited independently. Auto arrange the graph. Create a new scenario named sinusoidal. With the scenario active, right click on the influent object and select flow, flow data, and change the influent flow type to sinusoidal. Save the layout. With the controller turned on, run a 10 day simulation. The simulation will provide a basis for tuning our MLSS controller. Notice in our output graph that the wastage flow rate oscillates wildly between the minimum and maximum settings. This is the result of a poorly tuned controller. We will now look at how we can adjust our tuning parameters to get a more stable response. Change the proportional gain to 0.001, the integral time to 10 days, and the derivative time to 0 days. Rerun the simulation to see how these changes affect the controller. You will see that the changes result in a stable but sluggish response from the controller. Rerun the simulation, increasing the influent flow rate with the slider controller. The influent flow rate will act as a disturbance in our system. If the wastage rate does not respond quickly enough, increase the proportional gain to get a reasonable and stable response. Once the proportional gain is stable, try decreasing the integral time to increase the controller's performance. If there is too much overshoot observed, try increasing the derivative time. 
The proportional gain is responsible for adjusting the response speed of the controller. The integral time is responsible for driving the difference between the process and the set point values to zero. The derivative time controls the rate of change of the errors, thus controlling overshoot. Run a few more simulations, adjusting these settings to further tune your controller. Process control can be a complicated subject, and more information on PID controllers can be found in the GPSX technical reference. Create a new scenario based on the sinusoidal scenario and call it tuning. Right click on the clarifier and select Input Parameters Operational. Click on the More button under the Pump Flow subheading and go to the Pump Flow Control Tuning section. Turn the tuning switch on and drag the variable to the MLSS Controller Input tab. Set the fractional step size to 0 0.5 and accept this form. In the Pump Flow section, turn the controller off and set the pump flow to 100 meters cubed per day. The fractional step size of 0 0.5 will result in a step in the pump flow from 100 to 150 meters cubed per day. Accept this form. We will now check that we have the right settings. Click on the Scenario menu and select Show. This will provide a summary of all the changes made to the base model in this scenario. In the MLSS Controls tab, turn on the MLSS Controller and run a zero-day steady-state simulation. This is done so that the values of the manipulated and controlled variables, in this case pump flow and MLSS, are representative of normal operating conditions. Now turn off the MLSS Controller in the MLSS Control tab. Run a 10-day dynamic simulation. The output indicates that the step occurred at 0.5 days and that the simulation approaches steady state at the end of the simulation window. At the end of the simulation, the PID constants will be calculated and displayed at the bottom of the command window. To see the command window, click on the Simulation Controls button and select Command Window. We will add these variables to a new scenario called MLSS Control. Change the PID tuning parameters to the values shown in the command window. Turn on the MLSS controller and turn off tuning mode. Press the Transfer Controls to Scenario button on the Controls toolbar and add the controller tuning constants to the scenario. Run a 10-day dynamic simulation and decrease the influent flow to test the controller under dynamic conditions. As you can see in the output, the system approaches steady state at the end of the simulation window. Save the layout. You have now completed Tutorial 7 in the GPSX Tutorial Series. You should now be familiar with setting up automatic controllers in GPSX and adjusting their tuning parameters. Mm -hmm.